Petra Todd. I'm a professor in the economics department at University of Pennsylvania. My specialties are labor economics, development economics, and econometrics. One of my main areas is uh, social program evaluation and developing methods for evaluating different types of social programs. I've done a lot of research related to programs that are called conditional cash transfer programs. Um, and these are, there there's some in the U.S., but a, a lot of developing countries have these programs and they're designed to reduce child labor um, and they pay families to send their children to school. Uh, that's the main feature, but they also have requirements that they have to go to health clinics and get health checkups. So they're designed to stimulate um, more investment in education in these families to, um, and also to improve the health of children especially. I mean, I, I think that a lot of programs are implemented without a lot of planning about whether it's the best design or, you know, what's the program going to cost. And I think given that resources are very scarce, uh, that it's really important to think ahead of time and to, to use like economic frameworks to analyze how people are likely to respond to programs that have different sorts of designs. One of the reasons that I like conditional cash transfer programs a lot is that the money goes directly from the government to the family, so there's not a lot of opportunity for leakage. Like I think what happens with a lot of social programs is that the money goes to some sort of like consulting firm that provides training or something, you know, and then very little actually gets to the family. Um, I mean, they call it leakage, or, or sometimes, you know, you might have like in-kind programs that give free food to people, and then the storekeepers may just give the food to friends, you know, so I think the beneficiaries that are supposed to be the recipients of the, these programs oftentimes don't get it. So the nice thing about these cash programs is that the money goes directly into their bank account, and it doesn't go through 10 other people before it gets to them. You know, but one of the concerns has been that people may spend it on the wrong things, you know, like on alcohol or tobacco or things like that. And so that's something that they've been studying. Um, you know, how do people respond to these programs? And it turns out that they don't really misspend much of the money, you know, that it actually gets up, get, ends up being spent on things like children's shoes so that they can go to school. Um, so I feel pretty passionately about these types of programs that they're pretty effective and that it's important to consider them in different contexts to design the optimal payment schedules and to make sure that the right people are receiving the benefits. Well, I've been doing some research now combining like personality study with economics. So this is something that like Jim Hackman has worked on lately and he's found that these personality traits are really important in explaining like economic behaviors. Um, and so I have actually been studying this data from Australia, which is one of the best data sets. It's called the HILDA data set. And it has multiple years of personality data on multiple household members, like on husbands and wives. So we've been studying how personality traits affect um, allocation within the household, like who decides to work and how many minutes they spend on doing housework um, versus leisure things like that, and then analyzing the implications for um, gender wage gaps. You know, so this is an area that's new for me, that, and it kind of bridges between economics and psychology, and it's partly inspired by Jim Heckman's recent work on the subject.